Hey everybody, welcome back to the Bourbon Note. I'm Greg. I'm Ben. And today, I'm drinking a bourbon with a horse on it. All right, Ben. It's not Bland's, but bring it on in. But there is a horse involved. It is, bam, Chestnut Farms bottled in bond. All right, so this is a new one for us. Well, you've had the regular one. So, this is yep. the bottled and bond. I think I have like 90 proof, kind of basic one, and I tend to like it. It's basic, it's, you know, kind of budget-ish, but it's nice flavors. But this one, however, is not budget-ish. It's and not, that's... and the more so, I think about it, the more I'm a little reluctant to acknowledge that I paid $120, but... Yeah, so this is. is this is one of the Spirits Direct sort yeah. of total wine. I think they really like to push this one. You can usually get a sample of it, which is good. Sure. But it's, uh, it says from Barton 1792 Master Distillers, but then it also says well, Frankfurt, Kentucky, and yeah. there's, yeah, so I, I'm not really sure who's making this. What am I doing here? I, I think it's actually from uh, Barton. But yeah, that's the problem. But, I mean, it's, it's not like it's a bottled and bond that's aged 10, 12 years. It right. doesn't have an age statement on no, it. So obviously. I think it's four ish, maybe a tad over, but 100, yeah. 100 proof, obviously. Yep. Just to check the box. It's got a great nose to it. I mean, it's got a nice... It's rich, caramely. Yeah. Nice brown sugar, so. Let's... It's very basic. Like, it's a good... It's one of those really good basic down the middle See of the road vision, bourbons. Right down the middle of the road. Yep. If you look up the word bourbon in the dictionary, yeah, it'll... This. this. Yeah, this and is what bourbon smells like. Quite yep. honestly, it's hard to command 100... Well... 125 bucks. A smart for person wouldn't have paid 120 bucks for it, but. Now, well, nobody accused us of being geniuses. <laughs> Cheers. Let's yeah. get into the taste here. It's good. It's real good. It's uh, sweetness <clears throat> forward. Yes, very. Um, it's really, really good. Well, I'm getting a little complexity on the finish. Mm hmm. It's not the worst thing ever. Mm hmm. Um, it's it's nice and sweet. It has a, a bit of an oakiness to it mm -hmm. on the finish. Kind of dries out a little bit. It is thin and watery, but even though the proof is there. <laughs> but, so it, strike the $125 price point because obviously right off the bat before 120. you- 120. 120. Only okay. an idiot would pay 125. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. What kind of moron? <laughs> exactly. So taking that off of the, the table for just a second and just talking sure. about the, the flavor of the, the juice in the bottle. Fresh squeezed. Is, yeah, it's good. It's very I, good, actually. I do like this, actually. We've always said about the very old Bartons that they're a nice kind of down the middle, run of the mill, yes. good definition of what bourbon tastes like. Absolutely. Kind of basic, but mm -hmm. nice. I'm getting that from this, and maybe I'm, you know, power suggestion just because it says the 1792 yeah, Barton does. Distillers on the front, but exactly. it's, yeah, it's nice. It's a, it's a perfectly nice bourbon. Mm -hmm. I don't understand where the 120 price point came from, like how they come, how they came up with that. It looks good. It looks a little unique, and maybe it's one of those that it's really a $60 bottle, and Total Wine is fishing for, you know, mm -hmm. the big fish. This I, actually does come across as fairly well aged. It does. Um, I'm getting definitely some age and some and it's on it's it. getting a little bit more complex and interesting. Like it's not. I was thinking of just doing this versus the 1792, the yellow one, the, mm -hmm. um, the regular bottle of mine. Yeah. We have it. Um, I was thinking to do one a flight with that, because um, this does drink a little bit higher in than that. Do you want to bring it in? You know I have to do this. I know. All right, let's get into it here. Okay. So this one's got a bright red kind of fruit note where this one is a little bit more just like chocolatey, caramely. 
There is a, there's an interesting brightness on this one though too, on the 1792 bottled and bond. All right, so let me try it. It's definitely different. This one has a little more of a texture to it, I feel. Yeah. I, I know I said watery the first time. Yeah. But this is, in truth, the first bourbon I've had today. Um, you're finding it, as you're drinking yeah, multiple it, like, sips, it gets a little more... Like, I, my, my first thought was kind of entry-level-ish. I mean, it's a four-year bottle and bond. But well, it could be older than that. I'm getting a little bit more quality and nuance out of it after having several sips. Yeah. This one, go... I already know I like, but... Yeah, the Chestnut Farms is definitely the, the stronger of the two. You know, I, I was gonna say peach, and I, I think I'll say peach. It has a weird sort of fruity yeah. um, vibe to it, whereas the, the Chestnut Farms is more oak forward and sweetness. All right, those are about even. Let's get the blend here. That's right. <laughs> so, in conclusion, on the Chestnut Farms, like comparison-wise, I do like the Chestnut Farms better than the 1782 Bottled and Bond. I think I do as well. It drinks as a more high quality. Mm -hmm. Now, does it drink $90 Double. more? Because I think this is like 30 bucks or yeah. something like that, or 35 maybe. Yeah. You know, no. It doesn't. And in that price point, you I mean, you've got a ton of competition that's seriously, you know. Yeah, it, so the, for the Chestnut Farms, I kind of feel like People could see it being coming out across as a premium bourbon, mm -hmm. you know, because it just it does have some nice complexity to it, and it's very bold and rich. Comes across as well aged, but I just don't think that. I mean, the 120 bucks, I just, yeah, I, I don't understand that. These corporations, I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> so I'm wondering if they're kind of pulling this in house to be a luxury brand for 1792. Maybe. They, they do have Thomas S. Moore, another brand that I think that that's what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And the distillery used to be called Thomas S. Moore a long time ago. And those are all wine finished. Those are, yeah. Yeah. So I wonder if this is like a, I don't know. I wish they would give some more information on what makes this a $120 yeah, bottle. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yep. Like I just, if you're just putting out, I mean, there's a, a million bottled and bond bourbons on the shelf at Total Wine, why is this one yeah. the price that it is? That's what I just don't understand yep. about it. I totally agree. Other than that, it's really good. It is really good. I, I just don't think I'll be paying 120 bucks for it. Yeah, you know? I agree. So the blend is all right, but I like them each a little bit better on their own. What I, do you think? Well, I'm wondering, like, it's, I'm trying to like push <clears throat> off of the, I like sweet bourbons. And this is really in my wheelhouse for like exactly what I like. Yeah. But I don't want to just go there and talk about how great it is because I acknowledge that that's me. That's my flavor profile. Mm -hmm. And so um, I like this a ton. Yeah. But I think it is definitely an edge case for a lot of bourbons because you're not getting the real char and some of the barrel spice that you know some other kind of well-aged yeah. type bourbons would give you. If Total Wine sold this for 50 bucks, yeah, I, I think it, yeah, I definitely would. I think so. Would recommend it for sure, but yep. not at 120 though. Yeah, so. but they'd have to even put a 10 year age statement or something on it. Something know? like that, yeah. yeah. So. All right, well this has been Chestnut Farms with a little guest appearance by 1792 Bottled and Bond. On the Bourbon Note, I'm Ben. I'm Greg. Till next time. See you next time.